Well, after three years, we are excited to finally be preparing for linear appraisal on our farm. This is not the first time we've done linear appraisal, but it is the first time since uh, 2019. So it seemed like a really good time um, to talk about how to prepare for your very first linear appraisal session. Um, I'm excited that so many people who've never done it before are getting to do it now. Um, I apologize in advance that we are weaning kids, hence the screaming. Um, and I also want to take this moment to remind you that these tutorials are brought to you by our amazing Patreons. If you find that our tutorials are helping you become a better goat keeper and more knowledgeable, um, please consider joining us. Uh, there are special perks for our Patreons, including Patreon-only content called my deep dive conversations about all things goat geekery. All right, so with linear appraisal, this uh, tutorial assumes that you've already applied. Typically the application period is in January and it's usually a pretty short window. So if you aren't doing it this year, but are considering next year, be sure to be checking the ADGA.org website frequently around the end of the year to be able to apply for the following year. You don't want to miss that window. So you've applied, it's been received, and you've received your currently owned list from the ADGA, listing all of the animals that it is listed that you currently own on your ADGA account. Um, my list is four pages long, and I can tell you a lot of these animals were actually sold animals, and people never bothered to transfer them into their names. A little annoying and frustrating. So. When you get this, you're going to follow the instructions that the ADGA gives you about marking off um, the animals that are sold, animals who have died, um, but also putting in the freshening dates for your does um, in milk. And also um, it will give you an option about whether or not uh, you want to have your bucks appraised. Bucks are always optional. Um, and sometimes if they're too busy, they won't appraise your bucks at all. They're kind of secondary in this process. Appraisers also will not appraise um, any young stock. So that is any doe without an udder who's never freshened. Um, and also uh, young bucklings, junior you know, herd sires who are under a year and have no registered offspring. Um, keep in mind though, there are some uh, a couple caveats for the does. The rule is with the does is that you have to present them to the appraiser, even if they're dry, if they have ever freshened in their lifetime. And if they are dry, most likely the judge will, the appraiser will look at the animal and excuse them, but you still need to present the animal. Um, now, if you, your doe was appraised last year, whether that was in your herd or another herd, doesn't matter. Um, you do uh, have the option to opt that animal out of appraisal. You might consider doing that if you just don't want to spend the extra money. Um, or maybe you're like, you know, I don't think her score was as good last year. She's looking better this year. I, I do want to have her appraised again. That's, that's good. So go ahead and do it. Um, you can also opt a doe and milk out if she was last appraised after her fifth birthday. Um, and um, the other one is if she's... Um, is it seven or eight years old and up? Um, let's see, seven years old. She's over seven, even if she's never been appraised in her life. She does not need to be appraised. Um, you do have the option though. You can have an eight, nine-year-old doe appraised if you so choose. But at that age, you can actually opt them out completely. Um, the thinking here being that, you know, in the latter part of a doe's life, she's probably not looking as good um, as she did when she was, you know, in her prime at maybe like three and four three, four, five years old. Yeah. All right. So you've turned back in your currently owned list. You, um, uh, know who is going to need to be appraised in your herd. Step number one. Now check those tattoos, no matter whether you did them or whether or not you bought that dough, um, you know, with, it should have already been tattooed. Oh man. Do not guarantee that those tattoos are still legible. And definitely don't don't assume that even if you bought that animal from a well-known breeder that they did the tattoos correctly. Sometimes they might have switched them into the wrong ears. Sometimes it's just incomplete and you can't read the whole thing. 
all kinds of things happen. So check those tattoos. Okay, so then what do you do if those tattoos are illegible um, or backwards? Uh, so now is the time to go in and edit their registration. You can do this through your ADGA account. Um, you'll have to pay, but you can either like retattoo the animal and mark that they are retattooed. Um, you can uh, uh, also add an electronic ID and then put that number into their registration. Uh, you can um, tattoo in the tail web and update that you uh, the tattoo is now in the tail web. There are a few different things you can do depending on what the problem is. Um, if the tattoo is just totally not there, just retattoo and then go in to that animal's record on your ADGA account and click the button retattooed and you'll have to pay. I think it's, it depends when you're watching this, but probably about four and a half bucks. Um, and they will send you a new registration with that checked and it says retattooed. So if an appraiser sees kind of two partial tattoos or, or full tattoo and something in the shadows, that's documented and known. Um, now keep in mind that the way the current rules are, you have to send in, mail in your that animal's current registration in order for them to mail you back the new and updated one. So you're gonna update it online and then physically send in snail mail their old registration and get a new one back, right? I've had to do this for a few of my animals and I have to say I was able to get all of them done and updated and the new one back in a, like a week. So as soon as you have yet currently owned list, ideally even sooner, check those tattoos correct and fix the tattoos depending on what the situation is mark that uh, to edit their registration and do it in your online adga account and then send in that old certificate back do it asap so that you can get your blue sheets back from adga um okay so now that you have received an appraisal date now your clock is going so when I received our appraisal date um, about a week ago, I immediately started looking at my calendar and writing a clipping schedule. I like to clip my goats that I'm going to have appraised, ideally about 10 days before linear appraisal. But I have so many animals to clip, I, there's no possible way for me to do them in one day. Um, so I put a stretch of about four days on my calendar that I intend to do all of my body clipping on my goats. Now about three days before appraisal itself, three to five days, I'm going to clip their feet. I want that to be closer to appraisal day, but I also don't want them to be sore or walking really gentle on those feet if you clip them the day before and you accidentally clip a little bit too far. So um, that I'm gonna do closer to appraisal day, but not on appraisal day. Now the night before appraisal, I'm gonna trim those, uh, the doe's udders and get them looking really pretty. Um, and I'm also going to decide um, how long I want to fill that doe's udder so she looks good on appraisal day but is not overly full. Um, also keep in mind when you're setting your clipping schedule for your appraisal, make sure you have all the supplies on hand you're going to need for that clipping. I did the math about how many animals I was going to need to clip and I did not have enough fresh, um, nice, fresh, sharp clipper heads to get through that many animals. So after I set that clipping schedule, I went ahead and ordered um, some extras and also sharpened the ones that I have. So I have everything that I need to successfully clip, uh, body clip all of those animals. Later in this tutorial, towards the end, we're actually going to be hands on with the goats and I'm going to show you how I clip them. Um, for linear appraisal, both for if it's hot in the middle of summer, but also some advice if you are being appraised early in the year and it is still too cold out and not safe to clip them yet. There's still things you can do to show your animal to their best advantage to your appraiser. So now let's get into some details. Um, if you're traveling to a host herd, uh, you need to start preparing a couple of ways. One is you need to talk to the host, whosoever farm it is that you're traveling to, and find out what time they want you to be there. Um, they probably won't want all of the herds they're hosting to arrive at exactly the same time. Um, that is probably going to be too many uh, trailers in their driveway, too many people at once. 
So usually somebody hosting will set an order of who's heard goes in which order and they might have you arrive maybe one or two hours after they've started so that um, they will work through those other herds first and then get to yours. So communicate with your host herd and find out what time uh, they want you there. Also decide how you are gonna transport your animals to that host herd um, and test it ahead of time. So let's say you have eight animals and you are using a, um, a two horse trailer, um, but one of those is an intact buck who you know can't be let loose with your does, um, test how you are going to um, put them all into the trailer and you know, always, always, always check those brakes, check those lights. A lot of times those trailers sit in our driveways uh, a lot of the year and we didn't notice that one of the tires went flat or that the registration has expired, et cetera, et cetera. So um, do, uh, as soon as you have that appraisal date, start doing a check on whatever you're gonna use to transport uh, your animals to your host herd. Now, let's say you are a host herd or you're getting a private stop. Um, now you need to think about what is gonna be required um, for making sure that your appraisal runs quickly and smoothly. So if you're a host herd setting a schedule with who is coming to your farm and in what order they're going, which herds are going to be appraised in what order, so that is all strategized. You also need to have a level place to present the goats on to the appraiser. In the grass, the appraiser might not be able to see the feet, they might not be on level ground. Um, I have seen some people, let's say if you have a concrete shop or a garage, having the animal walk into there where it's nice and level. I have also seen folks um, use a piece of plywood and put down a piece of plywood in their driveway to stand the animal on so that the appraiser can see the entire animal um, to its best advantage. Um, also, do things for the comfort and help of the appraiser. Um, if this is being done in summer, uh, you know, be sure to have a pop-up tent or somewhere with shade that the appraiser can get out of the sun and any observers can get out of the sun. Um, we always set out a table for our appraiser because they will have paperwork that they need to be filling out as, as they go. Uh, if it's hot outside, hey, everyone always appreciates some nice cold bottles of water. Um, so the other thing that you need to really respect is that this appraiser is on a schedule. Um, they might be doing multiple herds beyond just at your farm in one day. So they might be appraising your animals, getting in their car and heading over to another herd. So you need to respect their time and stay on schedule. So what that means is you need to decide, remember this is if it's at your farm, um, you need to decide how to stage those animals so that you can quickly go from one animal to the next to the next, not having to walk all the way back down to your pasture, put one back, grab the next animal, walk them all the way out, and then back to your appraiser. Um, come up with a strategy for how you can have easy access. So first of all, definitely have a second handler, someone who knows your animals, and you can say, go get Bessie, and they grab Bessie, because they know exactly who Bessie is. Um, you can um, set up, like you can tie them all out to a fence, maybe set up you know, some, some ties and have all your animals tied out to a fence so they're easy. Um, you can come up with the ways of maybe using like a puppy yard to put them in, um, but do you know test this out in advance, make a plan. We are gonna be having our appraisal in our, our lower wraparound driveway. We have actually one breeding pen and then a small yard so all of our does are gonna be going into our small yard and then our bucks are gonna be going into our breeding pen of who is being appraised. And then they will each be brought out into the flat spot on our driveway. That's our, our strategy here, um, but do make a plan. Um, okay, so how do you prepare your animals for linear appraisal? Um, ideally, you want to clip the whole body as if you were taking them to a show. This means, um, you know, a nose to tail clipping, taking the beards off of your does, um, uh, giving them a nice little pom pom at the end of their tail, all that jazz. Now, if you have an appraisal like early in spring and it is temperature wise not safe to clip your animals, don't do it. It is not worth it. 
However, you want to be able to show things like the feet and the udder and rear leg angulation. So in these cases, I if I cannot clip the whole animal because it is not safe to do so, I am going to cut the fringe upon the legs. I'm going to cut the fringe along the chest and I'm going to clip the hair inside of the pasterns. Um, and definitely no matter what the weather, those udders are going to get clipped so that they look beautiful on appraisal day. Also, do not forget to clip inside the ears. Um, your appraiser is going to need to see those tattoos and um, having big furry ears is not going to help your animal. Um, and also be sure to take a rag, take a washcloth and clean out the dirt inside those ears to make those, um, make those tattoos legible. Okay, so it is the day before your linear appraisal. This is the day that I am going to um, clip all those udders and make them look as best as I can. Um, I'm going to decide how much fill each doe needs. You're not gonna wanna fill her udder like you would for a show where it's just like mega full. That's actually gonna make the texture not so nice. Um, so an overnight fill might be just perfect for her. And of course you don't know, it depends on what time your appraisal is. Is your appraisal in the morning? Is your herd not going until the middle of the day? So you might need to adjust a little bit um, depending on what time of day your appraisal is going to be. And of course, keeping in mind that some does look better with um, a little bit more fill than others and some, you know, refill really quick and you actually might need to, um, you know, uh, squirt out some milk because they might look too full. And that's actually really not a look we want for linear appraisal. We want them to be like moderately filled um, so that the, the appraiser can really look at that udder, but not that this doe is distended and that um, she is over full. That's, that's really not, we're, remember this isn't a show where we're trying to beat anyone else. This is just this one animal and how this animal, um, you know, where they are on the linear appraisal um, scale. That's it. Um, and, you know, I would definitely um, want to feed them their normal feed. I wouldn't want to change anything for the goats, anything that's going to stress them out overnight um, before appraisal. Don't let them know anything's coming up. Just play it cool. Just surprise them on the day of that they're getting appraised. Um, and then get some rest. You've done everything you can. The stage is set, the animals are ready to go. If you're trailering the next day, already have your trailer all ready to go, including like maybe packing some water from home if it's hot outside so that they have some water that they're familiar with and taste normal to them. Um, if you are gonna be in like a really dusty environment, if I have a goat that's got a lot of white splotches or is white, I may actually go ahead and fully wash her and actually put on, um, not a goat coat, but more like one of those socks they have for show lambs, um, just so I can keep her looking really clean and really nice. Um, and um, if, you know, typically our animals look their best on appraisal day. And so if you have a, a friend or a partner who when after you're done and the appraiser is done, not until the appraiser is done, you want to get some pictures of your animals, that would be a great time to do it. So maybe have, you know, your camera batteries charged and if you're not sure, gonna take them with your phone, that's fine too. Um, so that you can snap some pictures, you know, make make it a win-win, get your appraisal done and then have some new um, uh, photos for advertising or for your own purposes. Um, also consider if you have a friend there, having them take notes about what the appraiser is saying, positive and negative, because it's all gonna woof if you're the one, uh, presenting animals, you remember maybe 1% of what the appraiser said. So um, that can be helpful. And, you know, do uh, consider inviting some other people, whether that's 4-H students, um, uh, other friends who are newer to goats or who haven't had the chance yet to come sit in and watch and listen. Everybody benefits from linear appraisal. Not only do you learn about your animals, but this can help other people uh, learn how to evaluate their own. So I'm getting ready to clip this doe. Cassie's gonna be our role model today for um, LA. So first I'm gonna demonstrate if it was still cold weather here and it was not safe for me to do a complete body clip, um, how I would give her a cold weather clip that will still 
show her to her best advantage, but not put her at risk of getting pneumonia because we took all of her fur off. So um, I have two sets of clippers here. I have a bigger set um, and a smaller set. These are from Premier One. Um, Lister makes something very similar. Uh, these are wonderful. They work really, really fast, but the head is too big um, to do detail like on the legs. Um, this is a small set of Andis clippers, um, and these are going to be for more of the detail work. If you only have one set of clippers, this is what you'll need at a minimum. It will just take you a lot longer. Um, for blades, for a body clip, I'm going to use the 10 blade. Um, 10 refers to the number of teeth. Um, so the higher the number, the um, smaller and shorter the clip is. So um, we are going to use a 10 for most of the work we're doing today. Um, I switch to a 40 when I'm doing some detail on the udder and in the ears. But so for right now, we are just starting with the 10. important to follow uh, the manufacturer's instructions on oiling your clippers and as you go along we use something like cool lube to um, cool down the clippers as we go they do get hot um, from the friction and of course the goats do not want hot clippers pressed up against their body so i'm going to turn these on and give it a spray and away we go so if i'm doing cold weather clipping and i can't do her whole coat i am going to make sure to take this fringe off of the back of her legs to show off her rear leg angulation. her leg angle is more defined. Now, typically when we cut hair, we cut against the grain. Um, you saw that I did the opposite of that when I um, went down. Um, I have found that just to be a nice way to um, kind of control how deep I'm going um, when I'm trying to make an angle like that. But typically for most clipping, you're gonna be working against the grain. The more you work with clippers and clipping your goats, you're gonna find little tips and tricks that, that work for you and that individual, that individual animal. Um, then I would go ahead, the, this is again, cool weather clip. I am going to clip around her pasture. For that, I'm gonna use my smaller set of clippers. And when I do this, I'm gonna do it a lot like if I was trimming her feet. So I'm gonna go ahead and come over. I'm gonna pick up that hoof. And I'm gonna get all that hair in that groove there. And I'm gonna go all the way around. They're not gonna get pneumonia from mixing the hair around their ankles and their feet. And I would probably do the hawk here as well that usually has a fair amount of fringe on it. This can be really thick by the way. Really, really thick. And again, I just want to show off the nice angles of her legs. She has very nice, beautiful rear legs and I want to show her to her best advantage. So that's really kind of rough. I would probably clean that up a little more, but at a minimum, I would do her pasterns, probably her hawks here too, um, and uh, the rear, the rear side area. This is a really rough right now. I'm not trying to make it look perfect because I'm going to go ahead and flip the rest of this girl, but that kind of gives you a sense of at a minimum. Of course, I do that on all, all four feet. Um, the other thing too is I really like to show off, you know, the brisket extension here. This doe is not that bad. Some does have full on shag here. They also sometimes have shag in their armpits. In that case, I would take probably just my smaller clippers and I would just maybe take off the excess. I'm not going down to the skin. I'm very lightly holding this over her fur and trying to show off maybe a little more there where her, where her upper arm meets 
the body cavity so the um, appraiser could see that the, her front legs are pretty smoothly blended into her chest wall. And then I would probably take off this here as well, make that look nice. You can really see, she's got really nice wrist extension, but that shag is kind of covering up. So I'm leaving most of her body there, but putting in a nice angle here. You're gonna have to play with this and see what works and what's looking good on your animal. Remember, we're trying to show them to their best advantage. So I'm trying to make this still look good with the assets she has. Um, and then um, I would consider, once I had those four feet done and I had um, those uh, rear legs done, I would consider the show almost mostly done. The uh, other thing that I would do is I would, the day before, I would go ahead and clip and clean up the whole utter area. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move my camera so you guys can see um, what I'm talking about. Um, so uh, this doe, you know, we've cut off some of this fur here, but we want to show her udder to its best advantage. So I would take, at first I'd start with my 10 blade and I would cut, basically this is the escutcheon, I would cut from here down um, to show off the angle and the, her attachments of her udder. She's obviously milked out right now. Um, and then the day before LA, I would take a 40 blade and do the whole udder and try to make it really, really look nice, clean, and good. Um, now you can see, you know, most goats, it's rare that a doe is like, yay, put a shaving thing on my udder. They never like that. So um, I would definitely recommend when you're gonna do that to get a second set of hands to have somebody hold your doe um, while you are clipping. And if you're in a dark environment, you can put on a headlamp to help you see um, what you're clipping. Um, the last thing I would do for a cool weather clip is I would change out my blade to a 40. So you can see the 40 has teeny, teeny, tiny teeth. It is extremely, extremely short. I wouldn't want to use that for a body clip, but I do use that for udder. Um, and you want to trim inside of the ears. Now, if you thought goats don't like their udder clip, now just try clipping inside their ears. Now, why would you need to clip inside their ears? Um, they often will have long furry hair in there and it's um, critical uh, that the appraiser be able to see the animal's tattoos, which are inside their ears. Unless you're working with La Mancha's, in which case, lucky day for you. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and spray these. Actually, no, let's see. And this doe is not gonna like what I'm doing, but I'm just gonna try to work real quick. So she has pretty furry ears. Yeah, I see that. This would be helpful if I had another set of hands too. Here, nothing bad has happened, sister. Nothing bad has happened. Here we go. Yeah, that's it. That's it, sis. That's it. Let me do the other one. So that is what I would do if I was doing an easy peasy um, cool weather clip. And then of course, uh, a couple days before I would take my my um, my foot clippers, my hoof clippers, and I would do her feet. But um, I only like to do that a couple days before so they're pretty clean. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start giving this doe a body clip. I'm gonna be using my big set of clippers with a 10 blade and I'm going to clip her all the way down. the legs on a separate day if the doe is really um, in a bad mood and over being on the stanchion or to come back later that day. Um, I do recommend for, for when you're working on heads and udders, you're probably going to need a helper. Um, because who wants this held up to their face when it's on and it's loud? It's very scary. I don't blame them. It's very, your goat has a ton of trust in you that you're, you're letting you do this at all. 
So I am back with some help and we are going to work on um, trimming her uh, her rear and her udder as well. I'm going to do this all in a tin blade um, the day before appraisal. I'm going to come back and do just the flesh of the udder with a 40 blade um, and then really try to have a clean line here in the escutcheon. Today though we are just going to take off the fuzz um, and you'll see most goats don't like it um, and sometimes you need help holding them in the air to accomplish this task. Look at you. pretty short here or I hit it yesterday I can't tell. Okay, very good. Clippers are nice and cool which is we started with this not favorite area in order to have her be as calm and still have as much patience as possible. I'm going to go ahead and get into her armpit areas as well. That is really easy to miss. But when their udder is full, it's quite obvious in the system. So that's the outer area and then we're going to go about and start working on finishing up those legs. We're going to clean up the tail, um, we're going to clean up those hocks and those feet and then last we're going to do the head. Um, I'm going to do the tail next and how I like to do the tail, the, the bottle brush tail is to take off most of the hair here. We are going to leave the tip um, and then we're going to trim that um, and what I like about having trimming the tail is it really accentuates the top line and shows off the length of the goat. Trimming along the edges, getting all that hair around the tail head. You can see that there, a nice, nice short tail there. Make sure that's all even. And then I hold this in my hand and I kind of pinch it and I take off, depends on how long their tail is, but I cut a straight line across. So beautiful. Now she looks like a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful goat. Definitely, usually we'll need help with this unless you have a very, very um, well-behaved doe. Again, I'm using the 10 blade and um, uh, we're gonna do all of her neck. So you really wanna make sure to trim right here where um, they were disbudded as kids that really can show off their, their head. We are gonna take off the beard, which is a little sad because I love this doe's beard. Um, 
And then um, we, uh, as we did yesterday, you know, be sure to trim the inside of the ears with a 40 blade. Um, and I will do part of this in the stanchion, but usually to finish, you need to take them out of the stanchion, depending on what type of headstock you have. And be sure to use really cool, cool clipper blades. Um, it's The goat will respond even worse if uh, you use hot clipper blades. done do not forget to sunscreen your goats we have a lot of exposed skin now she actually she jumped off the stand yesterday ran off and then let me spray her and you can see now she's sunburned so she's going to be getting sunscreened every day until her coat grows back um, so i hope you have a wonderful linear appraisal session this is not stressful. We, we make it sound like it is, but on the day of, your appraiser will come, you'll say good morning, you'll get them set up, and they'll just start scoring your animals. It's not stressful. It is not like a show. It's a very positive environment, um, and you will gain so much from it. So best of luck. Can't wait to hear how your animals do.